What's up, my friends? Welcome back. This here is a huge capacitor. Well, it's not really a capacitor, it only has the shape of one. And this is actually a ultrasonic mist generator, because a few weeks ago I saw a post on Twitter with this picture. It looks like the magic smoke is coming out of a huge capacitor. So I thought that was a great idea, but I couldn't find that product to buy, so I have to make a homemade one. Usually we use these moisturizers with some perfume in order to increase the moisture of the air, but also to create a nice smell. We add any perfume such as this one here, and then when the mist is created, it also creates a nice smell. So you could buy such moisturizers online, but I couldn't find one with the shape of a smoking capacitor, which is a great idea. So let me show you what you need, the 3D design of this case and how to assemble it. And finally we test it and see if this project works or not. So guys, let's get started. Do you want professional PCBs like these ones that look so good? Then use the services of PCBWay. You can select the board size, any solder mask color that you want, including some exotic purple, or if you want, the matte black and green. You can select the thickness, and the PCB could be from 2 up to 14 layers for some more complex designs. The finish quality is so good, and if you want better connectivity, you could also select the gold finish for your pads. The ordering process is so easy, just go to pcbway.com, quote now, insert your design settings and the amount of PCBs, upload the Gerber files and order now and receive the PCBs in just a couple of days. What's up my friends, welcome back. The most important part for this project is the 3D printed case. And that's because the electronics part is very easy and it's very important to have a good shape of a capacitor in order to look good. My design of the case is made out of 6 parts, and in a moment you will see why we need so many parts. This is the container where the water will go. This is where the mist maker module will go, and the rest of the electronics. And we can close this part using the other one, and this will also have the ventilator. And then we have the main cover of the capacitor, which already has the numbers on it. All we have to do is to paint it with a different color. And then we also have this lid that will go on top, and it will be painted silver, in order to simulate the top lid of a capacitor. Finally we have this fit, so the entire capacitor will have some space from the ground, so the air could flow. Ok, so let's prepare the parts and paint them. I've printed them using PLA material, 2 parameters and 20% infill. You might need to sandpaper them a little bit, so they will be smoother. Also remove all the loose filaments and unwanted plastic parts. Now let's paint them. Electrolytic capacitors will have all sorts of colors, but usually they are black, brown, green or blue. I wanted mine to be blue, but I didn't find a good blue color, so that's why I'll make it brown and the text will be white. So I paint all the parts using spray paint and I apply a few layers. This part will go inside, so it's not that important to paint it. Only the lid will be silver and the outer part of the case will be brown. And then we can paint the details with black or white. So we leave the paint to dry and till then, let's go over the part list for the electronics. So to generate water mist, we use a high frequency ultrasonic piezo. This component vibrates so fast that it pulverizes the water into very fine mist. This module here works at 5 volts, and if you remember I've used it with the 3D printed Halloween pumping project. But that wasn't that powerful, so in order to get more mist and make this project cooler, I will use this other module that works at 24 volts. And this can create a lot more mist as you can see here. But best of all, this is already water sealed, and it also has a water lever protection. So when there is no more water, so no more connection between this metal pin and the generator, it will automatically stop. And that's great because without water, this generator will crack and not work anymore. 
Ok, so to supply the generator and the rest of the electronics, I will use a DC adapter like this one, of 24 volts. And to connect it to the entire device, I will use a power jack like this one. The digital control will be made with an Arduino, and to control the timer and the power, I will use three buttons. I want to use these capacitive buttons instead of the normal push buttons. I will also add a buzzer for sound notifications. And to get 5 volts out of the 24 volt supply, I will use a back converter module like this one. And all you have to do is to solder the 5 volts connections on the back. By the way, you can buy such a module from my shop, and the links are below. We also need a fan to push the air upwards and to carry the mist to the hole on top. But because this is a 12 volts fan and the supply is 24 volts, I will set that back converter to 12 volts and supply the Arduino directly on the V-in pin. To control the power applied to the fan and the mist generator, I want to use some N-channel MOSFETs. You will also need some glue, some resin in order to water seal the container, some screws, some threaded insertions, some wires and some other tools. You will have the full part list below. Ok guys, so by now the brown color should be dry. It's time to paint all the details. We can use black or white color for that job. An electrolytic capacitor must have a line marking the negative pin, so we paint that line with a different color. Then I paint the text for the microfarads and the voltage and that's it. In my case I've used a white permanent marker for the text. But for the line I've used the spring paint once again, but I had to cover the rest of the case. Ok, so now the case is ready and we also know what we need. The schematic for this project is something like this one. The Arduino will control when the fan and the generator are powered on and that using a timer. To control that timer we have 3 buttons, but I might use only 2 of them. Before I make any connection, we first have to water seal this part using the resin and then let it dry because it will take a few hours. I mix some 2 part resin. Then I apply a layer inside of the 3D printed part with a brush. Then we let it dry and we can continue with the rest. I get the other 3D printed part and we add some threaded insertions. As always, we heat them up with the soldering iron and push them inside of the plastic. So now we can use screws to close this bottom part. Then we have to remove some plastic from this mist generator. Because otherwise it won't fit inside of the 3D printed case. So we make it flat and now it should fit perfectly. At this point we can use some glue and fix the generator inside of the 3D printed case. Now I solder some wires for the signal and power to the buttons. So I have 3 buttons in series with 3 wires for signal. Then we can glue them inside of the other button part of the case, just in front of these button circles. Then we should apply 5 volts and check if the sensor can detect our finger, or maybe not, since the plastic might be too thick. But no, it works perfectly. So now that we have the buttons, the next part was to add the power jack. So fix it in place and next we add the on and off switch on the side. We add some wires for the ground and 24 volts and connect them between the jack and the power switch. At this point we should add the buck converter, but I've realized that the maximum voltage for this module is 24 volts, and since my DC adapter is a bit above that, it will burn the converter. So I've made a small linear converter using the LM317IC. And then I solder this converter to the switch, so now we can get those 12 volts out of the 24 volt supply. I also glue this converter inside of the bottom case. And by the way, we should also add the fan, and using some screws we fix it in place as well. And also make sure that it pulls the air in and not blow it out. To control the power for the fan and the mist generator, I've made a small PCB with a MOSFET and a BJT transistor as a gate driver. 
this would have a connection to ground, 12 volts for the BJT transistor and signal. Check the schematic for more. So I connect this to the fan and glue it in place inside of the 3D printed case. And then I make another one for the mist generator, but this would work at 24 volts. I connect it to some female pins and glue it inside of the case as well. And using those female pins, we can connect later the upper part that has the mist generator. Ok, so now it's time to connect all these wires from the buttons and the MOSFETs to the Arduino. So I take each one and connect them to the digital pins and also supply 12 volts to the Arduino from the regulator. And now everything is connected. And by now the other part with the resin should also be dry. Now we have to place it on top and make sure that it is water sealed. We add 3 screws and tie them from below with some nuts. Then I make some more 2 element epoxy and place it all around the mist generator module. Also we add some more epoxy on top of the screws in order to make this entire container to be water sealed. So now finally everything is dry and ready to go. We can connect the mist generator to the button case with the electronics. Then we can also glue in place that silver part on top of the capacitor and from the inside. So now it looks a lot more like a capacitor. It's time to upload the code, so download it from below. And this code is very easy. We detect when the button is pressed and we change the mode from 0 to 4. And each of these modes 1, 2, 3 and 4 are for 15 minutes, 30, 45 and 1 hour time for the misgeneration. And to let the user know which mode is selected, we make a beep, two beeps, three and four beeps, and a longer beep when the generator is off. This is an example of how it works. When this mode is not zero, we use a digital write to turn on the fan and the generator MOSFETs. And when the mode is zero, we turn them off. We count the time in seconds and when the elapsed time is higher than 900 for example in case of 15 minutes, we jump to the mode 0 where we turn everything off. And that's it for the code. Once uploaded you give it another test to see if it works, so connect 24 volts and test the buttons and also see if the fan turns on. So now the resin is dry and the container is water sealed. When we merge together these parts, the idea is that the air from the fan will go upwards through this hole and it will push the mist upwards as well and it will exit through the top hole. Without using a fan, the mist will just stay inside. I place some paper towels below and add some water. We check if there are any water leaks but everything seems to be ok. Before I close the case I connect power once again and give it another test but this time with the generator connected and with some water. And it works well and creates a lot of mist. Ok so now I can close the bottom case. Then I add some water once again and place the capacitor case on top and it looks quite good, right? I connect power and turn it on and there you go. It can create a lot of mist and it really looks like a magic smoke capacitor. So I can say that this project is a success. The idea is to also add some perfume to the water and give a good smell to your home. For example, I bought this mist generator a few years ago and it comes with all sorts of perfumes for the water. Just add a few drops and it will give a very nice odor to the water mist. So this project is very cool but also very useful as well. I had to change the design because the water container is too short and some water will get spilled out. So I should make this part a little bit taller. In the final design I've also made the container taller but also added a skirt around this container so any water spill would just go back inside. I also realized that I've made an error by placing the power jack below. Because like that is too high so the legs that I've printed won't be enough. I think it would be a lot better to have the power jack on the side together with the switch. Anyway you have all these changes below with the final design. 
So make sure that you download the schematic, the 3D files, the code and the part list from electronoops.com. I hope that you like this project and maybe you have learned something new. If so, give me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so we are at the end of this video. So some of you guys are supporting me on Patreon and thank you very much for that because thanks to you I'm able to buy all these components and the modules that I use for my tutorials. And if you would like to support me as well, you have the links for my Patreon, for my website and my shop below in the description. Thank you for everything.